we've got an amazing true life story of one woman's journey from being the director of a Planned Parenthood abortion facility to valuing all innocent human life, including unborn babies. It's a gripping account of an insider's view of the abortion industry. Stay with us. Abby Johnson was a psychology student at Texas A&M University when she started volunteering at Planned Parenthood in Bryan, Texas. Having grown up in a pro-life home, Abby never gave much thought to the issue of abortion. That changed at an opportunities fair on her college campus when a Planned Parenthood staffer started talking with her. I started talking to her and she started telling me how if, you know, if abortion was not legal and Planned Parenthood clinics weren't around, that, you know, we were basically going to be sending women to these, you know, illegal places and women were just going to be dying. and. Uh, and I thought, well, gosh, that just sounds horrible. And, you know, this sounds like something I really need to get involved in. And so I did. I started volunteering and, and volunteered for about three years. And um, right before I graduated from a and I um, started working there. I became an employee and just worked my way up. Abby initially joined the Planned Parenthood staff as a health center assistant. Over the next several years, she became the director of community services before finally being promoted to facility director. In this capacity, Abby supervised all center employees and oversaw day-to-day -day operations of the abortion facility. Describe to me your position on abortion while you were the director. Was it something you really strongly felt about? Yes, I consider myself very pro-choice. Um, I, I do think that I was pro-choice. Um, I was for a woman making the best option, uh, choosing the best option for her. Um, many of my colleagues now looking back, I would say they were pro-abortion. Um, you know, there were times when women would have an ultrasound. After talking with one of the educators, they would decide that abortion was not the right option for them. And so they would decide they would want to, to parent. And that made me happy. I would think, that's great. They're making the best choice for them. That would make some of my coworkers angry because they weren't choosing abortion and they didn't think that was the best choice for them. And, you know, looking back on that, it makes me kind of realize that people, a lot of people that consider themselves to be pro-choice are in fact pro-abortion. There's not very many people that work in abortion facilities that are in fact for choice. Would you describe it as a happy work environment? Um, it's a tense work environment. There is tension about people talking about where they work. The people that work there, in a sense, are ashamed to tell people in the community where they work. Um, and that came up a lot. Uh, that came up a lot, you know, if we were talking about, um, you know, just meeting people uh, in general or, um, attending church or just being out in the community and somebody would say, where do you work? And somebody, instead of, you know, s proudly saying, I work at Planned Parenthood, they may say, I, I work at a doctor's office. Um, you know, and so there is a sense of shame about working at a clinic that provides abortions, working at a clinic where the name is so synonymous with abortion. Um, and, you know, it's tense morale is very low at Planned Parenthood clinics. Um, when I first went to work for Planned Parenthood, there were a lot of perks uh, about working there. We got big bonuses. Uh, we had big fun parties. Uh, they really tried to do things uh, to show the staff that they appreciated them. Um, now, they don't do that anymore. Uh, and, you know, that's because support of Planned Parenthood is, is lacking from donors. Uh, they are in a, a very serious financial crisis. And what they take away first are benefits from their employees. And uh, that's sad because their employees are working very hard for them. 
but they don't show their employees that they appreciate them. When we return, we'll hear Abby's first-hand account of Planned Parenthood's abortion agenda. Whether you're a student needing answers, a parent needing help, or a concerned citizen wanting to make a difference, Life Issues Institute has the resources you need to put your values into action. Life Issues Institute is an international educational organization committed to protecting innocent human life. Life Issues Institute knows what it takes. That's why millions throughout the world turn here for help. Life Issues Institute has authored more pro-life publications than any other entity in the world, and its materials are printed in over 30 languages. Radio broadcasts, newsletters, and a website filled to the brim with the answers you're looking for are just a click away. Go to FacingLife.tv and click on the link to Life Issues Institute to find out more about how you can change the heart of a nation. As the director of Planned Parenthood in Bryan, Texas, Abby Johnson participated in monthly budget and planning meetings. During one such meeting, Abby's eyes were open to the greater agenda of what she thought was a family planning business. Every month, we would see that the Family Planning Corporation, which family planning is everything but abortion, and um, we would see that that, that number for the family planning, that budget number, just kept getting more and more in the negative. And it was really discouraging because our family planning clinics were really working hard and that number just kept increasing um, in the red. And so, but you know, they would say, but thank goodness for our abortion centers because they're keeping us afloat. And then my boss, started really hounding me about increasing our abortion numbers at my facility. And she said, you know, we've just got to get more women in here for abortions. And when I looked at our client goals, every, every um, center will have numbers that they want you to meet over the year, over the fiscal year, which kind of is sick that they want you to have a certain number of abortions that they want you to do. I saw that my number of abortions that they wanted me to do had increased by almost 60%. And I said, okay, wait guys, isn't this kind of the opposite of what we want to do here? I mean, shouldn't our family planning numbers be so high that our abortions would be decreasing? I mean, isn't that what Planned Parenthood is about? Aren't we about prevention? Aren't we about, you know, making abortion rare? Isn't that what we say we're about? And my supervisor said, you know, Abby, you've really got to get your priorities straight. Abortion needs to be your priority because that's where our money is. Wow. And that was really when I thought this mission that I have been so diligently working for the mission that they say they promote is not really what they're trying to promote. It's, it's, um, it's false. It's a farce. Do you have any experience with complications, botched abortions, deaths of women? Did you see any of that when you were there? Mm -hmm. Not deaths of women, but yeah, com definitely complications what kind abortion. of What kind of complications did you witness? Um, mostly complications from the medication abortion, the RU486. A lot of women choose that option because they think that, oh, this is going to be easy. I'm just going to go home. I'll be back to my regular self in a couple of days. Um, it's not generally the case. Planned Parenthood does not do a good job of warning them about the risks. It's a very painful experience. It is not an easy experience for these women, and Planned Parenthood does not do a good job of talking to these women about it. Um, and I did talk to these women 
in depth about what could happen to them. And my supervisors would get mad at me because so many women would then choose the surgical abortion after I would talk to them and talk to them about the risk of the medication abortion um, because the risks are actually um, less with the surgical abortion than with the medication abortion. And uh, they would say, you know, well, what are you saying to them? You know, and I would say, I'm telling them the truth. I mean, I'm giving them uh, all of the risks with the medication abortion, um, but for them, it's cheaper to do the medication abortion, and it's less staff time to do the medication abortion. So that's what they want women to choose. So there's a financial incentive for Planned Parenthood to choose a chemical abortion over right. surgical. Right. Hmm. So accusations by pro-lifers that abortion is a cash cow, and it's very much an abortion industry, and that the abortion industry, Planned Parenthood in particular, care more about dollars than women, are all those accusations true? Is that what you're saying? Yes, absolutely. And I never, I never saw it until I heard those words come out of her mouth that abortion need to be my priority. And I simply told her, abortion will never be my priority. Preventing abortion is my priority. Was that the beginning of the end? That was the beginning of the end. Coming up, we'll hear how Planned Parenthood's claim of offering true options counseling to pregnant women is anything but. Thank you for inviting us into your home. Each week we feature real people who deal with real life issues head on. Some of their experiences are uplifting, while others will break your heart. But in the end, the message is clear. Those who follow biblical principles on the issues of life are blessed. Become a partner with us in providing a positive, life-affirming message to help change the way the next generation values innocent human life. Please consider a generous gift to help offset the costs of producing this important quality programming. You can donate on our secure website at facinglife.tv or by calling the phone number on your screen during normal business hours. Together, we can make a real difference for life. Jenny Hutchinson is the coordinator of the 40 Days for Life campaign in Louisville, Kentucky. The campaign takes place over the course of a month and consists of people in the community holding peaceful, prayerful vigils outside of abortion mills. Sidewalk counselors offering alternative options to women going into the abortion center join them. Jenny describes how the abortion mill escorts have reacted to their peaceful presence outside. The sidewalk counselors, of course, are there every day, every day, rain or shine. If that center is open, there are anywhere from three, as many as eight or nine sidewalk counselors. And um, the escorts only used to come on Saturdays, but the escorts are there now every single day. And they started doing that um, in reaction to the 40 Days for Life campaign. And the escorts do what? The escorts um, kind of spy out the women as they're driving by on Market Street. They can kind of tell which ones are coming in. And I think in the, in the center, they tell them how many women have made an appointment. So they kind of know how many women they're looking for. And the escorts will go physically to where the car is and surround them literally um, seven, eight of them surround the women that are, are going to walk into the center. And their job is basically to keep the sidewalk counselor from offering any literature or even to keep their words from being heard. And there are some of them that are really big guys and they use their body weight to, um, to push or what they'll do if the sidewalk counselor is, is lucky enough to be able to get next to the people walking in, um, they'll run around in front of the sidewalk counselor and then just stop. And then of course the sidewalk counselor is looking this way, talking to the woman, and they'll run right into them. And then of course, oh, abuse, abuse, you know, it, it's just insane that the tactics that they use. They play loud music, they sing, they do everything they can do to keep the message that we're trying to, to get across to these women that they have options. 
It's not very pro-choice, is it? Well, it kind of makes me stand there and wonder if, uh, which tells me that they're not about choice. They're not there to um, offer a woman a choice. Your role inside Planned Parenthood was to counsel women going in for abortions. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that Planned Parenthood provides good, adequate counseling for women? No. Why not? They um, do not really give them informed consent um, about the abortion procedure itself. Um, they do not adequately tell them about the risks of abortion. Um, they do not give them options on the day that they come in for their abortion procedure. Um, they do not give enough training to the women that are talking. This all became very important to me toward the last two to three years that I was there. This issue of informed consent. Are we talking to women about the risk? Are we uh, giving women their options when they come in for abortion? This all became very important to me. This became an issue that I really wanted to look at um, and, and develop some kind of standardization. But did you experience any kind of pushback when you wanted to pursue this? Mm -hmm. So what I did was I went into a lot of facilities. At my facility uh, that I supervised, I actually went to some uh, adoption agencies in town. I got an adoption agency to come in and do some in-service training with my staff. Um, you know, I went to the Medicaid office, I got a bunch of information. I mean, so I really wanted my staff to be trained on all of the issues um, for different options and, you know, things like that. Um, and I thought that was just standard at all the facilities. I thought, well, if I'm doing this, surely everybody's doing this. Um, so part of my job was to go out to the facilities and look at what kind of information they had available to women that were seeking out options, counseling. Other options, Planned counseling. Parenthood mm -hmm. facilities. Yeah. What I found was that nobody had one stitch of information about adoption in their facilities. Their staff did not have any training on adoption. None? None and that the health center directors that were there were not really interested in receiving any kind of training on adoption or talking to women about parenting. Is it your opinion they kind of had a single-minded approach to abortion in Planned Parenthood? Well, that they're only experts in abortion. So, you know, the sad thing is that a lot of women, if they're in, you know, kind of a, something that's deemed a crisis pregnancy, they think that they can go to Planned Parenthood for options counseling, but that's not what they're going to receive. You know, if you ask a counselor at Planned Parenthood, you know, when, am I, when does my baby have a heartbeat? They have no idea. And you'll probably get four different answers. What was your experience when you tried to provide thorough counseling? They didn't want to take the time. So they discouraged you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they didn't want to take the time. They didn't want to close down their clinic. That wasn't important. Uh, as long as they knew about abortion, that was really all that mattered because that's how they're making money in their facilities anyway. So that's really all that matters. They don't make money on adoption referrals. They don't make money on prenatal information. They make money on abortion. In a moment, we'll learn how the abortion industry truly feels about a father's role in the decision of abortion. Whether you're a student needing answers, a parent needing help, or a concerned citizen wanting to make a difference, Life Issues Institute has the resources you need to put your values into action. Life Issues Institute is an international educational organization committed to protecting innocent human life. Life Issues Institute knows what it takes. That's why millions throughout the world turn here for help. Life Issues Institute has authored more pro-life publications than any other entity in the world and its materials are printed in over 30 languages. Radio broadcasts, newsletters, and a website filled to the brim with the answers you're looking for are just a click away. 
Go to FacingLife.tv and click on the link to Life Issues Institute to find out more about how you can change the heart of a nation. Ray Lebker is an abortion picketer from Cincinnati, Ohio. For the past 30 years, he set up signs and offered literature and options to women going into Planned Parenthood. He's seen the emotional ramifications abortion can have on the fathers. In many cases, the father has no rights when it comes to the issue of abortion, and the abortion industry would like to keep it this way. The women's libbers uh, believe that this is the, the ultimate right that they've gotten. It's their power uh, that they've gotten to, and, and any kind of um, re retreat from that would be egregious to them. They do, do not want to lose that right. To them, that's the ultimate power that they have, life and death over their child. Have you ever had an opportunity to talk to fathers of aborted babies oh, or yeah. fathers of unborn some, children? Some of them are angry as a dickens, you know, but, uh, and some of them are just hurt. And uh, yeah, I got literature uh, from Right to Life for them, but uh, mainly they just, uh, and, and they don't have any legal ground to stand on. The bottom line is uh, they can pretty well do whatever they want, and uh, he can't do anything. We have seen everything. We have seen fathers who find out that their girlfriends are in there, and they come down desperate to get them out, desperate. Um, I was told about a young man that actually sat on the little 